Welcome back tonight. President Obama makes his big health care pitch to a rare joint session of Congress. So what does he need to do to win support from both sides? Republican Congresswoman Judy Bigger joins us live from Washington, and word is that he is going to really impress his speech on some of the more conservative Democrats, hoping to get some of their support. Judy, what's your thoughts on this? What's it going to take for you to support this plan? Well, I think it's going to take a great overhaul of the plan that uh, he has presented and, and the plan that we've had in the House. Certainly, uh, this has not been a bipartisan plan at all, and I would hope that, that we would really go back to the drawing board. That would be the best scenario, go back to the drawing board and both sides of the aisle sit down and work out a plan that really, uh, there are some problems in, in it, such as uh, looking at the uh, med malpractice reform, looking at associated health plans, not making a draconian uh, change in our health care, but working on the things that bother people. And the other one would be pre-existing conditions. Congresswoman Biggert, we ask congressmen and women all the time on this, why isn't tort reform on the top of the list of this health care bill? Well, it should be, and, and tort repo reform we found in Illinois was a real problem when it, this, uh, the Illinois Supreme Court dropped it. Doctors fled the state, but right now tort reform, uh, you know, the doctors have to pr uh, uh, practice this defensive medicine, but un unfortunately that it's a political issue, and the, the uh, you know, the, some of the politicians listen to the trial lawyers, and so that it's really, has, there has been nothing, nothing in this bill on that. Uh, Congresswoman, President Obama has said that Republicans and Democrats can agree on about 80 percent of this health care reform uh, package here. Uh, Democratic Senator Mac Max Bacchus has come up with a proposal of his own. Uh, of course, he's with the Senate committee, uh, released a health care reform proposal that says that would not include a public option on it. What do you think of uh, Senator Bacchus's plan? Well, it doesn't include the public option, the government reform. The problem with it is the taxes that, that he has put in there that is going to make it, again, uh, it's $900 billion, $900 billion uh, it, rather than maybe $1.6 trillion. We're getting a little bit closer. But I think it still has all of the things except for the, the public option. If you're going to call it a co-op, it's really going to be the same thing. And that's a cosmetic change, I think. So it really isn't close enough for for uh, really uh, finding a bipartisan way. And I, and I really respect Senator Bacchus. He really does try and, and find common ground there, but I don't think that it's close enough yet. Let me also get your reaction to what uh, Senate Majority Leader Harry Reid uh, said yesterday. Uh, Reid said that health care reform is 90 percent done and that Republicans still have a seat at the negotiating table. Is that true? No. You know, we on this side have never, never had a seat at the table. Anything that we have brought up we, uh, has been gone to deaf ears, oh, nor have we even been asked to participate. A bipartisan uh, agreement really has to take into account the things that, that we think are important. We all care about having everybody have health insurance if they want it. And I think there are certain reforms that really need to be made, the pre-existing conditions, the, the affordability of it. Uh, that allows people to be able to purchase it, but that's that's about as far as we go. Eighty-five percent of people say that they like the health care plan that they have, and the president came out in the beginning and said that would be true. In the Education and Labor Committee, I offered that amendment to uh, to this to the bill in our in our markup of of the bill, and it was uh, unanimously voted down by the other side of the aisle. Congresswoman, what's going to happen to small businesses under this current health care bill? Oh, I'm afraid small businesses are going to get a double whammy. First of all, uh, the, the increased costs of, of the health plans will go up because you still have to subsidize the, uh, the government plan until it actually takes over everybody in five years. They're also going to, uh, so many small businesses pay their, their taxes uh, as individuals and they'll be, uh, if they make over $280,000 or, or $350,000 as a couple, they're going to be taxed to pay for the, the, the uh, government run option uh, on their income tax as well. Okay. Okay. They won't stay in business. Congresswoman Judy Bigger, live for us uh, from Washington, D.C. We thank you for joining us this morning. Up